question is from Dress Fit. What do you guys think about daily undulation? Uh, they're referring to probably what nutrition? I'm no, assuming? no, no, no. They're talking about exercise programming. Oh, so so changing so undulation essentially is changing your exercise programming, but on a daily basis in terms of the fundamental mm. aspects of your workout. Because so, when you see studies, the studies will show that this. So they did it. They did a really good study where they did this, where they you daily, you did it daily, or you uh, you did it in phases or periodized it. Periodized it. Did I say that right? Uh, now I can't say. Periodize it. it. <laughs> periodize it. No. Per, per, fuck. Now I can't periodize. Say it. Periodize. There you yeah, go. Like, what, so, Doug, are we saying it wrong? I don't even know. Periodization. Now. Periodize. Yes. Yeah. Periodize. Okay. Right. That would yeah, be the short. Good. Yeah. Okay. So, I said it right the first so, time. So. So. You got me all over from this that, that intro, bro. I'm all yeah. over the map right now. So yeah, they did that, and then they did some uh, 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 on a group that didn't change at all, and they found that uh, daily, and then like uh, every three weeks was uh, almost the same, and the, a little bit better in daily. Now this was a shorter study that was only I think a few months long, mm -hmm. but at the end of the at the end of the day, we know that it's important that you you change your exercise up now. I used to do it every single day uh, for a long time. Now, why I like the way we do it now, like how you, how most all the maps programs are, where we phase it in, you in know, blocks. yeah, in blocks of two to four weeks. What I think is better about that, and even though the studies have shown that they're pretty much equal, uh, what I think is better about that, it's easier for me to gauge and see things and see progress. Mm -hmm. So when I'm if I'm constantly changing exercises and and changing rep ranges and changing all those things up on like a daily basis, it's really hard to see like if I'm doing something and I'm consistently doing it if it's if it's making progress or I'm getting better at it or which which movement or exercise I, I'm getting the biggest bang for my buck because there's an individual variance in all that with all with each of us. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a, a movement for Sal uh, is just okay, but for me, like, wow, I've noticed huge strength gains when I did that or it feels great when I do it or whatever. And when you are constantly changing it every every day, it's kind of hard to measure those types of things versus, you know, following a program or sticking to something for a good solid three to four weeks and then starting to, to change everything up. I found that was something later on that when we – and this is something that we we did together. I know, Sal, the first Maps in a Balk was created this way, but all of the Maps programs are based off of this foundation. And to me, I think that's that's superior. Yeah, so it's, it's really a difference between you know doing – training in the, let's say, four to six rep range for three weeks versus training four to six reps on Monday and then Tuesday is – you know, 12 to 18, and then Friday is 15 to, you know, 15 reps, and then it's one to three reps. And so daily undulating would be just changing it all the time versus staying within a particular rep range or a particular style for a week or two or, or three or even four. Now, here's the thing. Uh, our, our opinion is based off of our experience training a lot of people. And I would surmise that if you took a large enough sample size, if you did, another, if you did enough of these studies and took a large enough sample size – you would find that the blocking or phasing of uh, you know people's uh, workouts rather than daily undulation will be more successful because for one of the reasons, which is what Adam said, people can learn about their bodies more. They learn what it feels like and how their body responds when they train just in low reps for a little while or just in moderate or high reps or when they train in a particular style for a little while. And that is priceless, by the way. Like no, here's the thing: if you want consistent long-term success, the most important factor is knowing your body. Mm -hmm. Learning your body is what's going to contribute to long-term success more than anything else. And for general population, uh, learning your body means you should stick in, in something for long enough to learn it, understand how, you, how it feels, and how you respond to it. The other thing is this, there, and this again, uh, you're not going to find this in, in, a, in a couple small sample studies. You'll find this in large sample studies or, or, or lots of them, is that when you're training in a particular, uh, you know, phase for uh, three weeks, there's a mindset that accompanies it. So what I mean by that is, when I go to the gym and I approach a workout where I'm training in the four rep range, and you know, doing longer rest periods, it's a very different mindset than going to the gym and training with supersets for 12 reps. And that mindset actually develops and solidifies over the course of 
one, two, or three weeks versus flipping all the time back and forth. Well, it's like sharpening up on your skills versus like, you know, just reacting to the day. So it, I don't know, I, I, I look at it differently in terms of I want to get better and I want to be able to see progress. So I have to have benchmarks to sort of guide the way. And, and there's, there's certain exercises that are, uh, you know, going to be, you know, higher in the priority list and, you know, a rep range that I want to see, you know, how my body uh, can improve upon. And the only way to do that is to, to repeat it enough times to really have a proper assessment of that. And that, so, I mean, in the argument of like just changing it up all the time, I mean, it, it Maybe you could make that for just if I'm constantly I'm in an environment where I have to react to things constantly and I like it, I, I'm I'm you know I, I have the ability where now I'm, I'm creating this this new skill of of you know being hyper responsive towards like all these different forces at once but uh, in terms of like me like being able to really assess that I'm getting strong in this direction because of this I have to like extract that out. I mean I I see value in it if you're somebody that has been training for a really long time and you've already gotten good at all the skills. You know your body. Yeah, you know your body really, really well. You're not, this isn't the, the, the learning process. This isn't your first five years of training. You've been training for decades and, you know, and so you like to switch these things up on a, on a very regular basis. I, I don't see any, any problem with that. I just, to Sal's point that uh, our advice comes from training the general population. And when I think of that, I think I'm, I've, spent most of my career trying to teach the skill of lifting weights to my clients for a long time. And if you were, if we looked at this like a skill, just like a, an athlete is learning their sport, whether it be basketball or soccer or baseball, you, what you wouldn't do is constantly be throwing different skills at them every single day or multiple right. things in a day. You would, you would focus on one thing and you would stick to that until they got really, really good at that. And then you would move on to the next thing and stick to that until they got really, really good at it. Because there is the, the learning curve of the skill of the movement, which I think later on plays a, that's why those studies I think are a bit flawed because if you take, you know, if you take the three of us who've been lifting for a really long time and we do something that's daily, you do something that's every three to four weeks and then you don't change it at all, I think it would confirm what those studies showed. But if you took somebody who you took thousands of people to your point, Sal, that have that are really still learning how, <clears throat> how to squat properly and to deadlift and do some of these movements, and would it be better for them to stick to that squat or stick to that deadlift? for four weeks consistently versus squatting one day, then doing Bulgarian squats another day, then doing lunges another day. Oh, that for sure, yeah. Right. They, they, they're they they're barely figuring – each one of those mo movements are extremely difficult in themselves, and to be flipping them all the time, I don't think you're, you're giving yourself the opportunity to get really good at the skill of it. 